So friends, so we have been talking about SEBI ICDR regulations. Earlier we have already covered SEBI Act and some important provisions of ICDR regulations. The chapters which we have already covered, number one, eligibility for making public issue, number two, pricing, and number three, promoters contribution. Now next important thing is, preferential issue. Now this chapter is covered under regulation number 70 279. Prima facie a long chapter but here we are covering only important and relevant provisions. First is what is preferential issue? So first of all, this is issue of shares or convertible securities. And this is a case where offer is given to a specific person or persons. Now you have already read Companies Act and in the Companies Act you are very well aware of that existing members have the first right to get the to apply for the shares whenever new shares are offered for subscription. So in this case, the offer is not being made to all the shareholders of the company, but it is being given to a specific person or persons who may be one among the members, who may not be a member. It may be a bank, it may be financial institution, it may be mutual fund, it may be promoter or any other person. So when offer of the securities is made in such a way so that it is only the specific person who is entitled and this is in preference to the existing members that's why this is called as preferential offer or preferential issue now first of all regulation number 70 says that whatever provisions we are going to discuss those do not apply in certain cases do not apply or you can say non applicability of the provisions which we are going to discuss right now if you read regulation number 70 that itself is a long regulation but here we are covering only what is relevant and what is important actually the entire chapter I am covering that way relevant and important so provisions of preferential issue will not be applicable if it is a case of conversion of loan into equity in accordance with provisions of Companies Act. That is one. Conversion of loan into equity in accordance with the provisions of Companies Act. Number two, under any scheme of compromise or arrangement. approved by court or tribunal so earlier it was approval of the court now it is approval of the 
tribunals under whichever scheme the shares had to be allotted because quite possible under the scheme already approved by the court earlier the allotment is to be made in installments over a period of time so quite possible even now the shares are required to be allotted under that scheme which is approved by the court number 3 under any rehabilitation package approved by BIFR or tribunal so if it is a industrial sick company approval may be by BIFR in all other companies under insolvency and bankruptcy court the tribunal can approve a rehabilitation package so when any securities are to be given to any person under any of these schemes then whatever we are going to talk about those provisions are not applicable right so this is regulation number 70 first is conversion of loan so the loan agreement is having a provision that in a given situation a certain portion of the loan can be converted into equity and that is the option available to the lender so all agreements of the financial institutions have such a clause where they can exercise the option number 2 under any scheme of compromise approved either by the court or by the tribunal and number 3 under any rehabilitation package which is approved by the court or by the tribunal now under regulation number 71 the concept of relevant date is explained and the concept of relevant date is relevant is important for determining the price at which the securities are to be issued so we have regulation number 71 and this is talking about relevant date price is required to be calculated as per further regulations and for determining the price the price of securities of the company during a certain period prior to relevant date is to be taken into account so that's why relevant date becomes important so relevant date in two different situations if shares are being given then what is the relevant date and if convertible securities are given then what is relevant date in case of shares 30 days prior to the date on which members approval is obtained for preferential issue so every preferential issue requires approval of members by way of a special resolution the date on which resolution is passed that is not the relevant date but exactly 30 days before the date of general meeting on which this approval is taken that date that is 30th day prior to the date of general meeting that will be referred as a relevant date and if convertible securities are issued in that case 30 days prior 
to the date on which holders of convertible securities are entitled to apply for shares so i said the relevant date why this is important this is important for determining the minimum price at which a preferential issue can be given so for that purpose when convertible securities are being issued on this basis for making the issue of convertible shares or convertible securities members approval is needed but the price of the shares will be determined when the conversion is due so when members are entitled or rather holders are entitled to apply for conversion from that date 30 days prior to that date will be called as relevant date right so when we talk about the pricing you will understand the relevance of this point more in detail right now this is the regulation number 1 relevant date now regulation number 72 that talks about certain more requirements now regulation number 72 that talks about conditions for preferential offer regulation number 72 on this regulation itself independent questions can be there in the exam so be very careful this is conditions for preferential issue condition number 1 members approval has been obtained by a special resolution so always any preferential issue requires prior approval of member by way of a special resolution number 2 the proposed allotty the proposed allotty if he is an existing member of the company if he is not a member this condition is not applicable holds all shares of the company in dematerialized form in other words you can say any person holding shares of the company in physical form is not eligible for a preferential offer or preferential issue of the company number 3 the issuer has complied with all requirements of listing 
agreement. All the compliances should be there. So first requirement, members approval by way of a special resolution. Number two, if the proposed allottee is holding shares of the company, all those shares are held in phys uh, are in demat form. Number three, the issuer has already complied with all the listing requirements. Number four, permanent account number of proposed allottee. has been obtained so these are some basic requirements for making preferential issue now another condition preferential offer cannot be given to any person who has sold any shares of the company during preceding six months so that condition comes in addition to all these right so now we can put a title no preferential offer to right so here no preferential offer Number one, to any person who has sold any shares of company during preceding six months so when we say preceding again this is from relevant date so this itself is a question who are the persons to whom preferential offer cannot be given so first is any person who has sold any shares of the company number two any person holding shares of the company in physical form that we have already seen earlier Number B, to a promoter, if he failed to exercise right of warrant. So warrant itself is a right by which he is entitled to apply for and acquire shares. So if the warrants have been issued to him, only then this is relevant. So where warrants have been issued to the promoter or any person in among the promoters group and on the due date person failed to exercise the right of acquiring shares against warrants, in that case he is not eligible and one year has not passed since due date for exercising option. So assume that the due date for exercising the option is 1st April 18 and he has failed to exercise the option then up to 31st March 19 no preferential issue or offer can be made to this kind of promoter or a person among the promoters group. Now this is another category. So this says any person. So when we say any person includes promoter also. So a promoter has sold during six months, it cannot be given. This is only for the promoters. So there is a difference. Here we say any person. So any person includes promoters. 
and this is only for promoter right so if there is a, some other person who is holding warrants and he has not exercised the rights during proceeding one year offer of preferential issue can very well be given to that person so we have already seen that every preferential issue requires prior approval of members by way of a special resolution now when a notice for a special resolution is sent to the members an explanatory statement is required to be attached now regulation number 73 says certain disclosures which are necessarily required to be made in the explanatory statement so that is regulation number 73 and this is talking about additional disclosures in explanatory statement so when the notice of general meeting is being sent to the members for approving a preferential issue the notice has to be accompanied with an explanatory statement and regulation number 73 say that whatever is required under the companies act as far as a part of explanatory statement give that and in addition to that certain additional disclosures are required to be made and those are number 1 object of preferential issue why preferential issue why it is required number 2 who are proposed allottees number 3 relevant date for valuation and if the shares are to be given as a consideration other than cash for acquisition of assets from the promoters director the relatives then value valuation rather valuation of assets by independent qualified valuer but only when the assets have to be acquired for a consideration other than cash number 5 share holding pattern before and after this preferential issue so these are certain additional disclosures which are required to be made in the offer or rather in the explanatory statement which is required to be attached with the notice once again have a look why preferential issue number 2 who are the proposed allottees to whom the offer is going to be made then relevant date for the purpose of valuation now this is what you have to understand why did we talk about relevant date then valuation of assets by the independent qualified valuer but only where the assets have to be acquired for a consideration other than cash and number 5 shareholding pattern of the company before and after the preferential issue then in continuation regulation number 74 this is once the special resolution has been passed then allotment under preferential issue within 15 days 
after passing a special resolution now there may be a situation where the allotment cannot be done within this much time of 15 days so therefore if not then another special resolution and another relevant date so because in this case the pricing can change this is regulation number 74 that once the special resolution has been passed for obtaining the approval of member thereafter allotment has to be done within a period of 15 days and if company fails to do that pass another special resolution and only in dematerialized form so earlier we said that the preferential issue allotment cannot be given to any person holding shares in physical form the reason is this because in this case allotment will be only in dematerialized form and regulation number 75 this talks about conversion period conversion period so by chance if convertible securities are being issued under the preferential offer then the maximum time within which conversion has to be done that is 18 months so these are three regulations certain additional disclosures required to be made that is regulation number 73 then allotment within how much time that is regulation number 74 and in DMED form that is also 74 and 75 says that if convertible securities are being issued on preferential basis in that case maximum period within which conversion has to be completed that is 18 months. So now starting regulation number 76. This is price of shares, but at what price preferential issue can be made and here we are talking about minimum price, right? And we must understand the fact that if the promoters can take higher price from the proposed LOT, that is possible, but this is the minimum price. And this minimum price is based on two facts. The shares of the company are already listed for 26 or more weeks. or those are listed for less than 26 weeks and then here we have higher of the following two higher of the following two so two parameters are given two prices that will be decided and out of the two price whichever is lowest or rather whichever is highest that has to be minimum price for preferential offer number one average of the weekly highest and lowest price calculated on weighted volume basis during 26 weeks preceding relevant Date. So from the relevant date 
preceding 26 weeks average right so relevant date itself is 30 days prior to the date of passing of a special resolution then we take weekly average and then again average of average and number two is same only different that here we have 26 weeks and this becomes two weeks prior to relevant date that is the only difference between the two so this is average of 26 weeks this is average of two weeks preceding the relevant date and out of the two prices whichever is the highest that is the minimum price at which preferential offer can be made now if it is listed for less than 26 weeks again this is going to be same but only for the period for which the securities are listed so this will be same here but for the period period for which securities are listed so say if those are listed for 15 weeks so we will find the average of 15 weeks if those are listed for 10 weeks we will find the average of 10 weeks and this remains same this two weeks remain same here so again same higher of the following two so this is how the price of shares in the preferential issue has to be decided so preferential issue in case of further public offer if promoters are subscribing anything more than their minimum subscription required that will be treated as a preferential offer <coughs> and if any reservation is made for any person on firm basis that will also be treated as a preferential offer so quite possible that this price computed is more than the price at which the public issue is being made in which excess subscription is being taken by the promoters or any other person so they may have to pay extra price and when they pay extra price that is not considered as a differential pricing for the purpose of SEBI regulations so this is how the price is decided now regulation number 77 talks about the payment when the payment is to be made So in that case, regulation number 77, this is about payment. So if shares are being given in preferential offer, full payment at the time of allotment full payment is required to be made at this time only and if warrants are being given in that case there is a sequence first is calculate price of shares as per regulation number 76 and 25 percent of this price should be paid for issue of warrants Now warrant is a right against which a person can get the share subject to payment of balance amount. So this is a warrant, it is not a compulsory conversion, it is a matter of choice that he can pay and take shares. Balance is 75 percent before allotment of shares on exercise of option so when the warrant holder exercises the right at that time he has to pay balance 75 percent but what if he doesn't exercise the option on the specific date because in that case we have earlier talked about that the maximum period within which the right can be exercised that is 18 months 
So if it does not exercise the right within the given time, if warrant holder does not exercise the right payment already made is forfeited so this is the amount and time when it is required to be paid so when shares are issued on preferential basis full payment before allotment if warrants are given, calculate the price of shares, charge 25% and balance 75% when shares are issued on exercise of right. And if the right is not exercised, the money already paid that will be forfeited. Now coming to the last provisions in this, lock-in period and transferability. So when shares are issued under preferential offer, Regulation number 78 says that those will be under lock-in period for certain period of time. Lock-in period. Now lock-in period will start since the date on which a listing approval is given. Since listing. So shares allotted on preferential basis, those are also required to be listed. So the period of lock-in will be counted since listing. Now, who is the allottee to whom allotment has been given? If those are promoters or directors, the lock-in period will be different. And if there is any other person, lock-in period will be other thing. Now, if those are promoters, then after allotment, how much their holding is? Up to 20% of company's capital or it is more than 20%. So if it is up to 20% lock-in period will be 3 years and for exceeding 20% it will be 1 year and for any other person this will be only 1 year. Now lock-in period means what? During this period regulation number 79 says during lock-in period shares are transferable among Promoters group only, not to any outsider. So effectively you can say that those shares become almost non-transferable but transfer is allowed only among the promoters. So this is the end of all the regulations relating to preferential issue of shares or other securities. <music>come to the last relevant topic in SEBI ICDR regulations and that is issue of bonus shares. For issue of bonus shares there are regulations starting from 92 to 95. In this regulation number 92 2 says 
issue of bonus shares shall be authorized by articles of association so if it is there is no authorization in articles i mean the articles of association number 2 no existing default relating to principle or interest and this is in relation to deposits or other debt instrument that is debentures so no existing default if default is existing till it is rectified bonus shares cannot be issued and there is no default for statutory dues so statutory dues are not only taxes all labor payments payment of wages payment of bonus gratuity compensation that is also covered under statutory dues so no default should be existing in relation to any of the law and all existing shares are fully paid up so partly paid up shares cannot be made fully paid up by issuing bonus shares so these are few conditions given in regulation number 92 first is it should be authorized by articles number 2 no existing default in connection with the deposits or debentures number 3 no existing default in connection with the statutory dues number 4 all existing shares are fully paid up now regulation number 93 this is talking about outstanding convertible securities so when convertible securities are outstanding means conversion is pending at that time if we issue bonus share then these people will not get because bonus shares are on shares so their interest is likely to be affected adversely if the bonus shares are issued so this regulation says that if convertible securities are outstanding first option don't issue bonus shares till the conversion takes place second option available make a provision for issue of bonus shares on those shares also which will result on conversion of these convertible securities right regulation number 94 this says bonus share should be out of profit rather out of reserve sorry out of reserves created out of profit earned so if it is not earned profit there is a reserve is out of that bonus shares cannot be issued same thing in other words not out of asset revaluation reserve this is the regulation number 94 now regulation number 95 says no withdrawal that once issue of bonus shares has been announced this cannot be withdrawn 
reason being because these are the provisions in relation to listed companies and once the announcement is made to the stock chain that bonus shares are going to be issued then immediately there is a change in prices and today we make a declaration tomorrow we decline that we are not issuing then lots of changes have already taken place and lots of transactions may also have taken place so to avoid that kind of doubt or prop situation the regulations say that once you announce issue of bonus share this cannot be withdrawn and for issue of bonus shares if only board of directors can take a decision so board can take a decision if interested directors are not there in that case allotment should be completed within 15 days after an annou announcement bonus shares shall be issue allotted within 15 days and if members approval is required so where directors are interested they are already holding shares in the company they are said to be interested because they will also get bonus shares on the shares already held by them in that case board cannot take a decision and members approval is needed so for calling the general meeting itself around a period at least a one month time is required so the time given here is within two months so these are all the provisions in relation to issue of bonus shares as far as regulation number 92 to 95 is concerned regulation number 92 says bonus shares can be issued only if so authorized by articles of association number 2 there shall not be any existing default in connection with the deposits or debentures so it is a question of payment of interest or repayment number 3 no statutory dues outstanding so statutory dues i said even the dues under labor laws are also the statutory dues number 4 all existing shares must be fully paid up means partly paid up shares cannot be converted into fully paid up by issue of bonus regulation number 93 says if you have outstanding convertible security then either don't make allotment or make a provision for issue of shares on those the shares also which will result on conversion of convertible security Regulation number ninety four says that out the bonus shares can be issued out of the reserve created out of profit actually earned by the company. So therefore, this is negative statement for the same that no bonus shares can be issued out of asset revaluation reserve. Regulation number ninety five is saying that once the bonus shares are announced, then it cannot be withdrawn, and then. if the bonus shares can be allotted by the board so where directors are not interested in that situation allotment must be completed within 15 days after the announcement and where the members approval is required for issue of bonus shares then bonus shares shall be allotted within 2 months since the date of announcement so here we come to the end of all the relevant important provisions as far as sebi icdr regulations are concerned thank you